Hey there, this is Therese Skelly, and I am so excited that you are going to be listening to an episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. Do you like those two words? Fiercely Brilliant. My hypothesis is that you are here for a reason. We all are. Our souls have led us on journeys that have very often taken some twists and turns, and sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes there's struggle and there's loss and there's challenge, and in the middle of that, there's always a way out. And it's those times that often lead us into our great life and work. So you're going to hear stories in these episodes of myself and other beautiful people that share the journey. They share how they got to the place where they're standing, working in their brilliance and being the powerful leaders that they are. So stay tuned and enjoy this episode. Hey, 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 this is Therese Skelly, and this is another episode of Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. I hope you're enjoying these. You know, my goal is to help you step more into that brilliance, that brilliance that is yours to have and be and to work with. But there's a lot of things that make it impossible, right? Maybe you've noticed that. Maybe you have great visions and then like, what the heck? Or maybe you have experienced like a stop-start pattern. You know, sometimes you're rocking it and other times, right? Um, just a little shameless plug here. My, my new book came out. It's actually a bestseller. Love-Based Mission, How to Create a Business That Serves Your Soul. It's really, it feels like this book kind of is, starting to organize my work more you know very often like you do stuff and then it's like oh i didn't know that was what i was going to be writing about or i didn't know that's the direction i was going in and so in terms of this podcast in the beginning it was called fiercely here right because after lots of grief like i had a three-year period of just death 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 loss loss sick kids like holy hell i had decimated you know I came out of it and I was like, yeah, I'm fiercely here. And I felt really strong and powerful. And I, like when you lose so much, you get to the place of like, and I don't give a fuck anymore. Like I, life is short. I really learned that when my kid's dad dropped dead suddenly, oh, life is short. And why in the world tolerate, why are you tolerating less than what you should tolerate, right? And so I had this, like this branding, like I wrote the Fiercely Here Manifesto and I started a Facebook group called Fiercely Here with Tree Skelly, which was fabulous. And then I was like, wait a minute, I just don't want people to be here. That's cool. Yeah, I'm here. I've arrived. I want them to be brilliant, particularly women. Because William, will, will, women have, I can't even say the word, women have been dimmed. Women have been um, subjugated. Women have been tamped down. And so I'm all about bold self-expression. I'm all about be your freaking brilliant, badass self. So the podcast is now called Fiercely Brilliant with Therese Skelly. And I bring experts in that share, to, th to share their journey stories. And I share my own understanding of how you get there and what's in the way. And so today, I want to share with you, I'm reading a book, Glennon Doyle. Y'all know Glennon Doyle? Ooh, she's so good. Um, the book is called Untamed, and it's fabulous, really fabulous book. And in this, I'm going to read a, just a couple sentences. I just sent it to all my friends. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> this, right? And so Glennon is talking to her daughter named Tish. Her son is named Chase. And Tish, I think Tish is like 12 or something like that. Tish says, Chase. Chase wants me to join the same clubs he joined in middle school. I don't want to, Glennon. So don't, Tish. But I don't want to disappoint him, Glennon. Listen, every time you're given a choice between disappointing someone else and disappointing yourself, your duty, listen to this, your duty is to disappoint that someone else. Your job throughout your entire life is to disappoint as many people as it takes to avoid disappointing yourself. When I sent that to one of my girlfriends, she said, my God, I wish I would have had that training. Don't we all? Because how many of us, I mean, I became a freaking therapist. Like I was the epitome of having to be there for everybody else at the expense of my own needs. 
most of us women over 40 were trained to not really factor in our needs. Just do anything not to disappoint your children, your partner, your clients, your parents, your family, your values, your religion. Oh, good hell, don't. And I was raised, like, at the bottom of this is shame. You know, I literally was raised, what will the neighbors think? Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I, I, I joke that, you don't want to hear my birth control? <laughs> All right, that sounds odd. That sounds like an odd thing to to share, but it's apropos. My mother, my mother was, if you come home pregnant, Therese, you will be shipped away. You will not disgrace the family. I was raised with so much. Every action you take must make the family and us look good. You will not disappoint us. You will not. So that's real hard when you get those kinds of messages to say, no, I think I'll choose me here. I'll choose what I desire. And I have to say no to you, or I have to say, I'm sorry, that's not going to work for me to you. Uh, anybody else getting glitchy? Like, let me read this again, because this is freaking good, right? Every time you're given choice between disappointing someone else and disappointing yourself, your duty is to disappoint as many people as you can throughout your entire life, as long as it takes to avoid disappointing yourself. That just, like, literally my hair is crawling. I'm just like, ah. Uh. So women, let's start not disappointing ourselves. So what would it take? What would it take to stop disappointing yourself? You know, there's an expression, I think it was Tony Robbins, that says, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you tolerate. And if you tolerate little subtle microaggressions, if you tolerate subtle boundary violations, if you tolerate subtle put downs or subtle, um, I'll take the seconds. And no, 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 you, 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 you have the first, right? If you tolerate that, you are constantly in a perpetual state of disappointing yourself. So what I want you to do, step one. Well, step zero. Decide. I guess that's step one. Decide you're no longer freaking going to disappoint yourself. Like, like to say it with me, I will not live another day. I, I will live no more days chronically disappointing myself. Let's do a pinky swear. Come on. Sisterhood. Decide you're worth it. And if you don't believe you're worth it, I do. Because I'm Mama T in here. Here, I got this. Boom. You're worth it. I deem you worthy of fighting for yourself. I deem you worthy of knowing that you can choose you over choosing other people. Because I guarantee you, money, happiness, great relationships are all over here when you start saying, I'm not going to accept shit anymore. I'm not going to accept less than. I'm not going to devalue myself and disappoint me to keep you happy. Disappoint me so you don't get offended. Disappoint me so you don't feel small. Can we say, oh, hail to the no. We're done with that. So the first step is you decide to be freaking done. Say it with me. Woo. As of today, I'm done disappointing myself. Today, I am a fierce champion for myself. And if I don't believe it, I remember that the crazy redhead that lives in Scottsdale with those goofy dogs, she believes in me. She does believe in me. You decide. And then number two, you look at all the places where this goes on. Because some of them are going to be flagrant, like, oh, God, oh, yeah, the big, yeah, that's boulders, easy to see. And others are going to be more like the little micros, the little tiny, you know, where you kind of, you kind of would rather, you know, you're with your partner and they say, you want to go to, you want to go to eat? Well, now that we're in the pandemic right now, so nobody's going out to eat anyway, but pretend back to the old days and we actually could go to restaurants. Woo! Um, nostalgia for a moment. Pretend that you are with your partner and they say, I really want Chinese food. Let's go to Chinese. And you're like, shit, I just can't have Chinese. I'm just so, I just am craving Italian. And you go, oh, okay, I guess that's fine. All right. That's whatever makes you happy. 
because I don't know about you, my training, my training was that you always make men happy. That's what I do. That's what good women do, right? Because they're the most important ones. It's our job to make them happy. My mom, before she got woke a little bit, she literally would say, why would you want to hang around with women? Like, a party isn't fun until the men arrive. <laughs> so I was raised with a misogynist mother. What? And we wonder why it's taken me so long to own my value. And that's why I get to teach this stuff, right? But I was raised that, oh, no, 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 no. Like, whatever the man wants, right? Or whatever your kid wants. Or whatever the client wants. And so they're just the little tiny ones. you got to say, you know, honey, I hear you want to tell you. I hear you want Chinese, but I'm just... I've got to have some Italian. I have Italian. I have a little grave and some pizza right now. So you might not get the Italian, but at least speak what you would prefer. You can negotiate the details later. So again, there's the getting it, but then there's the acknowledging it and expressing it. Does that make sense? You know, we're not going to turn into bullies. We're not going to be like, no, <laughs> how dare you ask for Chinese, right? It's just going to be like, what, what, you know, here's one way. It's kind of an access consciousness tool. What feels light? What feels heavy? So you can just also use your body. How about Chinese? Ugh. You don't want to live on that, right? And again, if it's neutral, like, oh, it doesn't matter. You just pick. I don't care. Like, wherever you want to go, I don't, it doesn't matter. So there's the big boulders of disappointments, right? Maybe it's you're not even working business how you want to work it. Maybe you're offering programs that you're like, eh. They're selling, they're okay. Eh. And just there's the little tiny ones. So make a list, make a list. Maybe by the end of the day, you can even journal on where did I disappoint myself? Or conversely, where did I not disappoint myself? Where did I speak my truth? Where did I actively say, mm -mm. no, no, it's not going to work for me. That takes so much freaking courage. Like you literally go against the grain of our ancestors. You'll go against the grain of all the women. But you know what? Remember, look at, look at freaking Rosa Parks. Look at the suffragettes. Look at the women on whose shoulders you are standing. The ones that stood and said, no more, no, no. And maybe you don't have the courage, but literally invoke those people. Invoke the ancestors, the strong women that have come before us that just said, we're not going to take it this way anymore. We are no longer going to be seconds at class. We no longer will be disappointed. We are choosing ourselves and what we desire. Woo, say that. I choose myself and I choose what I desire. Juicy. All right. So you decide. You make a list of the big ones and the little ones. You journal daily or nightly. Where did I nail it? Where did I fall short? And you just pick, like you just make it, like obviously it's kind of like um, if you're going to clean your house, let's say you're going to declutter, you don't just go room to room to room to room to, you just go, okay, you know what, I'm going to do one drawer at a time. That's, that's, that's that, okay, let's do one drawer. So are there little buckets? So maybe you could say my relationships, where do I disappoint myself? Who are the top three people I disappoint myself with? With my body, my health, where do I disappoint myself? You do it to yourself too, maybe, right? There's maybe the part that's like, I want to get really fit. And then the part that's like, oh, can I just drink wine and have brownies? You know what I mean? So there's parts of you that you're disappointing. With your home, where do you disappoint yourself? With your business, with your friends and family. There are multiple places. So that's what I want you to really, really work on. And just start digging in. And if you, if you can't do this for yourself, remember, you're also doing it for our daughters, you're doing it for the next generations because we have got to turn the tides here. And so it's not just, oh, why does it matter? It really matters, right? You are changing the consciousness, you are elevating the collective of how women get to be. And the more of us that stand up and say, this is now the new model. We don't have the gym cleavers, we're not raised with that shit anymore. It's still swimming out there, but this is the new model and this is how we're doing it. You empower and inspire the younger generations of women. It's a big task. So my goal, lovies, is that you start choosing yourself. All right. This was so fun. You can tell I get kind of I kind of get jacked up with this kind of content. So do me a favor. Leave a review. That would be really a really gift. Leave a review. Let, let me know how you like this podcast. 
and reach out to me if I can support you. Like, this is the stuff I do. This is my career stuff, right? Like helping you fortify yourself, helping you have the boundaries, helping you step into that vision of that person that is unfuckwithable. Isn't that a good word? Helping you stand in that vision of a woman that is strong enough to say, no, I'm not going to disappoint myself any longer. That's the work I do. So if that is interesting to you, go to treeskelly.com forward slash let's connect. Let's take you an appointment calendar. We'll have a no charge consultation conversation. See if I can support you and it'd be nice to connect and get to meet you. All right. Peace and blessings. Great to talk with you today and I'll see you again. Bye. Hey, if you liked this episode, I'm going to encourage you to head on over to Amazon and buy my book, Love Based Mission, How to Create a Business That Serves Your Soul. A lot of the concepts we talk about in this podcast are about how your soul shows up in your business and in your life. And so if you are really mission driven and want to make sure you're expressing as much of that in your life as you can, grab the book on Amazon. It's a very easy read with lots of practical tools. Love Based Mission how to create a business that serves your soul. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.